I'm gonna help you make your prime scan straightforward. Come on! First things first, the prime scan is phenomenal. It's been out for about a year now. It's super fast, high quality, but still people are using it incorrectly. So I'm gonna give you a few suggestions on how to make this uh, better for you. You know, I'm on Facebook and all the different social media places and I see a lot of things on the internet. And the first thing I'll have to say is slow down. Oh my gosh, it's not a race. But the problem is, is that the marketing of all the products, whether it's Seric or uh, an iTero or any of the other systems, it's all about speed. Well, you know what, when it comes down to it, if you had your restorations made with one of these digital scanners, I bet you wouldn't want the dentist to go fast. Just like you wouldn't want to take a super fast impression and take it out before it was too soon. So slow down. Don't believe everything you see online. And especially for new users, just because you see it online going fast doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way to do things. I, I've answered so many emails on, hey, I've had this problem, I've had this problem, and the, when I finally get to see them in our classes come in and scan, they're going way too fast. You know, I've got, here, where is it? You know, I got the fancy new little phone and my wife bought it for me, thank you, Christine. It was very fancy. Um, I like photography and she got the new phone with the three little cameras on the back. And you know, it's super fancy. But even with this, when I'm taking a picture, you wouldn't want to go like this with it or go in and out, in and out, in and out. Because what's going to happen, you're going to make blurry images. Now, the Prime Scan is a little bit different technology than that, but still, why would you want to take that and rip it across teeth and force it to see things quickly? So think of it like this, like this is the screen of the Prime Scan. We've got the, the screen here and then the, the base, and we're going to scan teeth or gingiva or whatever it is. Now, as it's coming across, it's laying down a grid really, really fast. And then the data is coming back into it, but there's time for light. The light has to come out and go back in and then process it, which it, it's got a computer on board, so it's doing a lot of great things with that. But the thing is, is the tiniest little detail that it's trying to see, like the distal buckle of one of your margins that's barely exposed, and you're ripping this thing all the way across, you could potentially be giving it data that it has to extrapolate. If you just slow down a little bit and get in the sweet spot of the, of the camera, your data is going to be fantastic. Now, the, th the thing that's deceiving is when you're scanning initially, the initial models look like they're being built and everything, and they're, and they're being made, but we don't know how quality of the data is because they don't expose that to us. So we're just assuming, we're taking for granted that the data is correct. So, you know, I can already read the comments of what people are going to say, especially if they're not Sarek owners. Oh my gosh, Sarek has been talking about how fast it is and everything, and now all of a sudden one of their trainers is saying to slow down. Well, you know what? The Prime Scan is really fast at accommodating of our inaccuracies. That's why it's so great, because we are the variable. We are the one that's moving the camera, waving it around, and it, they've had to actually make the camera better because we're going fast, okay? Not the other way around. Now, if you just kind of slow down and kind of breathe a little bit, and I'm gonna give you some techniques here in a minute, your data is gonna be better. And if you don't even have CERC, if you have another system, uh, like the Medit, or uh, again, like the iTero or Plan Mechas, you're probably going too fast too, because they use light also. Until we have a different technology that isn't using light, we have to allow the light to go through the lens, hit the data, and then come back without something shifting too quickly in between to, and have algorithms within the computer to, to process that. So anyway, slow down just a little bit. I promise your data is gonna be better. Something else that I think will help you out tremendously is Image with two people. I know that you can totally do it with one person. I've done it many, many times. But if you have another person walking around the hallway, an assistant, somebody else, a hygienist, God forbid a hygienist has to sit down and help scan something. Just kidding, hygienist. Hopefully my hygienist didn't hear me say that. But 
if you could have one other person sit down, maybe they can help retract the cheek. Maybe they can watch uh, the monitor with you, but they're watching something else, and maybe they're picking up an area that maybe it's starting to bleed over a margin. I always think it's better to have four eyes while scanning just because things come up and you want to make sure you have the best data possibly. The other thing that will happen is when you're scanning with two people, uh, one person can be watching the model, the other person can be watching the live camera view, but you can watch for moisture control. Like, uh, you know, when I, when I personally scan, I want it dry, dry, dry. In fact, uh, whenever we're doing training with people it, in the mouth, uh, I always say dry, you can't, you can't dry it enough because if there's any, well, obviously blood, we don't want blood to get in on the margins, but if there's any even curricular fluid or any moisture that's starting to billow up somewhere on a margin, the light has to go through that moisture and, and it gets refracted. So that doesn't, that, what that means is the, the data coming back may be lessened. So dry, 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 make sure you're keeping your prep as dry as possible. All right, so let's scan a case. You know, I just turned 50 and I gotta put my glasses on. My little readers, gotta put them on so we'll open Sarah here. Uh, let me get a model. All right, so we got, we're gonna image a prep on number 30. Uh, first thing is, camera will automatically turn on when we grab it. Uh, my first recommendation, and this is a pet peeve of mine, I, I think a lot of people uh, really like it, but the, the button that's on the bottom of the, uh, the base, people like to use it to kick it to start it and turn it off. Uh, I, we needed that in the red camera and the blue camera days, but not now. I, I think it's too much to think about. When I watch new users uh, use the Omnicam or the Prime Scan, and they kick it on and they kick it off, they get confused really quickly. So when it's um, in the mouth, then they got to reach over and if the computer's even leaning too far away, they got to try to kick it. And then the, it's, just, it's just awkward. Just leave it on, let it do its thing. And that includes the Omnicam as well. All right, so I got to put my glasses on, hang on. My first suggestion is find a good starting point. Now, um, if you're using the button, you may want to go all the way to the back and then kick it on. But what I'm going to tell you to do is start somewhere easy. Now, there's different areas of the mouth that are really, really easy and some that are really hard. Lower anterior teeth, they're really hard, okay? Not that they can't be scanned, but why start on something that's more difficult to image? Uh, you could start on the buckle of lower premolars. That's a huge surface area that's really easy to scan. And there's a lot of data. There's a lot that's going to fill up the entire rectangle or you can go right on the occlusal surface. I personally try to go right on the occlusal surface to start. Now on the upper uh, teeth, the maxillary teeth, I mean, that's pretty easy uh, because you know there, there's no tongue in the middle or anything, but you could start on the buckle and move posteriorly. Don't start in the back and then get going because you gotta go past all of those teeth with that, and you may be scanning already and then it picks up something and there'll be one little blurb of a model in there and, and it can't find it ever again and you get hung up trying to get back to that spot. So again, my personal recommendation is don't use the button. If you're a long time user of CEREC and you like the button, use the button. But new users, try not to use the button, just let it be on. Okay, so I'm gonna start scanning the lower premolars. So we have a, a model here, and the way I like to think of this is I like to think of uh, CEREC imaging as movies. Uh, the red camera and the blue camera days were single pictures, but with the Omnicam and the Prime Scan, I think of this as the movie. So what we're looking at right now is the first short little video segment of, of the rest of the model. And so when CEREC is trying to find out where it is in the model, like it's trying to catch up, it's always gonna start looking at the beginning and then move forward. So if I show it this, which was, let's call it the first frame of the first video, if I'm gonna show that, watch how fast it picks up. It's gonna pick up immediately and instantaneously. So it's almost like what I, what I call a pivot point. Um, it's good to have a pivot point on your models. Okay. Next recommendation is build a skeleton or build a framework and then go back and fill in holes. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna image the occlusal, I'm gonna image the buckle and image the lingual and I'm gonna stop. 
So I've got my pivot point. I'm gonna go over the occlusal surface, roll it to the buckle. I'm not thinking about holes at all. If I miss something, I don't care. The tongue just instantly got in the way, I don't care. I did the occlusal, I rolled it over the buckle, did the lingual, and I'm gonna stop. The camera comes out of the mouth, you can set it down, and then you're gonna evaluate. So now you look at, to see what you need. Now obviously, like on this model, there are areas that need to be filled in, like the distal of this premolar, the mesial of this molar. But just on the skeleton, I've got it all. So there's no reason to actually start filling more in through here and more and more and more and more and more. All that does is builds the file size larger and larger and larger. And the problem with that is, is when you go to the next step, it sits there and processes and processes and process. And we've all sat there and, and waited. It could be that you're imaging way, way too much. In fact, I can almost guarantee you that you're imaging way too much because I've watched it countless times. So if you look at this model right now, um, again, I just need to fill in those few areas. Now, it's human nature to go, well, I'm going to go put the camera in right where it's missing, but this is just a computer. It has no intuition or anything. It only knows the data that you've put into it. So if you put it somewhere that it already knows, like, again, the premolars, like the, what I call the pivot point, and then move to it, it's going to go even faster. Now the prime scan is so good that you could probably put it right on the void and there'll be enough image inside the rectangle that it recognizes that it will fill it in, but why make it harder for it? Well, it helps if I start on the right teeth. So boom, it goes. I'm gonna fill it in. Once you start to see it fill in, stop and evaluate. Stop and evaluate. Now I've got this the distal of this premolar to do, but I've seen this so, so many times, and it doesn't do the, the program anymore getting more data the way this happens. So the human, as we're using the camera, we're like, fill in that hole, fill in that hole, fill in that hole, but the entire rectangle is just getting more and more data, more and more data on top of data on top of data on top of data, and you're just building your file size for it to start slowing down on a simple restoration. So I'm gonna to go to the pivot point, boom, it happens. And then I'm gonna look. Now, right now, I've already filled that in. I did that in what, three or four seconds, and I'm, I'm done, but this is what I've seen. So I knew that I had to fill it in. So the mistake I see people do is they image it, and they image it, and they image it, and they image it, and they image it more, and then they go back over to the prep, and they think, well, I really want my crown to fit, so I want to image more and more and more and more. And maybe it needs to see a little bit more on the, on the lingual. And you know what? The data is already good to begin with. If the, if the holes are filled, move to the next step. Move forward. Now, if you start getting too much data on top of data, what will happen is you'll start seeing in the little catalogs, it's trying to patch one video, let's call, again call them videos, one video on top of another video on top of a video. Well, if you throw in a cheek, okay, so let's, let's, let's say this, my, this, my big finger got in the way, and Sarek has the feature that it's going to start taking things out. Now you're telling Sarek, take one video, and add to the, the video that we already put on there, but then I'm gonna throw something in there, my finger or the cheek, but then start taking it out. So you're adding a lot of the processing unnecessarily. So don't make it harder on the data. All right, next thing is, and this, is, this has been uh, percolating through the internet for too many years. It just, it drives me crazy when I, when I hear people say, well, if I'm gonna do a crown on number 30, I have to image all the way to the contralateral canine to do that case. No, you don't. You don't. You, don't. you do not at all. There's a little bit of science to show that the biogeneric proposal, that's the, the fancy anatomy that you get, might be a little bit better if you show a little bit more of the model. I've done it so many times where I've shown it just the adjacent teeth and the proposal is almost identical. 
I mean, let that sink in for a second. It's almost identical. So if I did the, let's say I did the full arch, just to get a little bit more anatomy in the occlusal surface of number 30, or I got an extra sluice way to make it better, that didn't make the patient happier, didn't make the bite better, didn't make anything better other than you just built up a ton of data. Unfortunately, this is a thing that's been going on um, with um, uh, salespeople and people that aren't actually doing clinical trainings. And, and if you are, if you're one of the clinical trainers and you're saying that, you're asking all of your doctors to make models that are much too large. In fact, I would dare say we probably only need half of the uh, adjacent teeth and it would still give us a great proposal. I know it will because I just described red camera days. Anyway, you don't have to go to the contralateral canine. Right. One thing to consider is the data that needs to be the best, okay, is what you're gonna mill to. So I'm gonna mill to a few things on this. I'm gonna mill to my margins, of course. I'm gonna mill to the adjacent uh, interproximal surfaces, and I'm gonna mill to the, uh, the approximating tooth, okay? Everything else doesn't matter. So let's say you have a void, it, like on this canine, that doesn't matter not even one little bit. Um, let's say you didn't quite get the undercut on the mesial of 31. Well, you're not gonna mill to that. It doesn't matter that it's filled in. So you don't have to take your camera and keep showing it the mesial of 31, the mesial of 31, the mesial of 31, the mesial of 31, megabytes, 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 megabytes. The file's just getting larger and larger and larger. So have a reason for imaging. You need to image to what you're going to mill to the best, okay? So you don't have to keep going on and on and on. All right, so let's go to the upper. Now, with that said, we can go a little bit faster now, okay? I don't, I'm not really that worried if, about the accuracy totally. I mean, I am, but I, I can be a lot quicker because I'm gonna mill to the occlusal surface of tooth number three and four. So we'll get it started. There's, I'm gonna still do the skeleton. Move it around and then go towards the palate. Stop and evaluate. I've, I've said this countless times to students in our class. Just so you can look around and see what's happening. Now I know on this deniform there's, there's some holes that are in here which aren't really real because human gingiva usually comes up farther. But this information that's uh, missing on the mesial surfaces of these premolars literally does not matter, not even one little bit. It, because I'm gonna mill to this surface up here. The rest of this could have holes in it. That, hell, there could be a cheek in here or something like that. It doesn't matter. It's what you're going to mill to. All right, now buckle. Another big uh, misconception on this is that you have to image like the entire quadrant. That is, a, that is a human thinking of like maybe two models coming together, meaning you'd want two, if you had two models in your hand and you were holding them together, you'd want as much surface area as you possibly could to, to uh, match them together. That doesn't, that doesn't count necessarily in the digital world. In the digital world, once it sees the upper, once it sees the lower and it recognizes that, those data points and puts them together, you can stop. You'll know that because you'll see the, the ghost images. One of the suggestions that I make uh, to our students, and, and I tell our patients this every time, is when you're gonna do the buckle bite, have them bite hard. So tell them to bite firm without hurting themselves. Because you know, if, the, if you're numb, <laughs> your lower quadrant's completely numb. In Texas, we'd say, you're numb, all the way to, uh, you're numb all the way to Dallas up here. I can't feel my face. Well, tell them to bite hard, so that way you know they're in a compressed maximum intercuspation position. Okay, so I'm gonna tell them to bite hard. I'm gonna show it basically. Okay, look, that's all I need to do. I've got a ghost image of the lower. I've got the ghost image of the upper. Those two models are now articulated. I don't have to keep going and going and going. If I keep going and going and going, it's not gonna articulate any better. In fact, you're just gonna add a lot more data. So watch, if, this is what I see typically. The models are already articulated. You can, you can do this all day long. They ain't gonna change. They're gonna stay just like that. 
and I just added a lot more megabytes for no reason. Your Prime Scan is an unbelievable tool. It is super fast. Don't push it to its limits. In fact, don't push any dental scanner to its limits. You don't need to. You saw how little imaging I needed to do just for one restoration. This goes with multiple units as well. Your goal, I believe, is better data, not faster data. Okay.